So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about this three string double bass. Uh, it's of a pattern which you can see in um, paintings going back to four centuries ago and more actually. Um, the construction is quite light, it's a relatively small instrument as you can see, uh, well maybe you can't, but um, it's not a big double bass. Um, made very lightly in the construction, the neck uh, is fitted, uh, the ribs are fitted into the neck, there's no separate block which is a construction issue which means it was never likely to be converted to a four string instrument and as you can see it's still a three string instrument. Made in the middle of the 19th century but as I say from a pattern that goes back many centuries um, these days we think of a three-string bass as quite exotic, but for most of the uh, of history, double basses, three strings, has been as com more common than four, um, because the fourth string itself, the lowest string, was, uh, was a very um, expensive string to add, and who needs those really low notes anyway? So this is a G, and this is a G, and this is a D. Not quite in tune. But then they're never quite in tune. However, it's nice to have two G's. There's a nice resonance from it. Um, it makes fingering a bit queer if you're used to instruments tuned in fourths to have a fourth and a fifth. On the other hand, you've got two G strings and the fingering on them is the same. So a B here is a B there and a C there and so on. The bow that I'm using is of a big, uh, what some people call a Dragonetti pattern, which is a kind of a generic term for it, to big, wide open bows held underhand like this. Uh, again, this is a pattern that, um, that goes back for centuries and centuries. Um, you'll see them in paintings going back as far as you like, and people holding them underneath like this, which is closer to the way you hold some kind of a tool for working, sawing, whatever than the more refined overhand grip. It's good for the bass because you get you get a lot of weight in there by hanging underneath it like that. This bow actually has a metal slide at the top of the frog. That is to say, this wood and this wood have a metal interface between them. And that gives it away as being probably early 20th century. Hard to believe, but apparently because of Dragonetti's um, importance in the English-speaking world, in England in particular, but then, naturally enough, in the Empire and in the further flung parts of the Empire, Dragonetti, who lived in the first half of the 19th century, um, he, in London, uh, his influence was still felt beginning of the following century, and in parts of, uh, far-flung parts of the Empire, apparently bows like this were still being used because this was the way it was done. Um, it looks like a very ancient thing to us, but the very ancient versions of it wouldn't have had this metal slide. The metal tap here is quite nice, isn't it? So, um, there we are. There you are. That's the three string double bass and it's a tendent bow.